Great to have you back here on The Breakfast. Our final uh, discussion this morning is uh, moving into statements from the presidency alleging plots to destabilize the current administration and the government. The presidency is alleging that there is a plot to overthrow the government. Presidential spokesman Femi Adesina released a press statement saying religious and political leaders are behind the plot. Adesina says the evidence to back up the allegation is unimpeachable. Uh, part of the plan, according to him, is to work with external forces to throw Nigeria into unrest. Public analyst Nika Gule is joining us from the United Kingdom. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Good morning. Happy to be here today. Great to have you here. Um, so I'm going to start with saying that it's not the first time that we're hearing, you know, similar statements from uh, the current administration. Um, I remember a couple of, uh, a few years ago, actually, there was a statement like this also released by the government saying that there were people who were uh, trying to cause uh, unrest across the country. But now it's, uh, it seems like the, the target is the Nigerian government. Um, so you, what, what does this all, you know, uh, appear like to you? Well, it only means that the country is sick. These are symptoms, they are symptomatic of a country that, in the words of the defense minister of Nigeria, is bleeding. So what one expects is for the government of Nigeria to address the issues that are causing these symptoms instead of coming out threatening citizens and trying to, to model free speech and freedom of association. Yeah, but couldn't, isn't it possible that they, they, the security for agencies, intelligence agencies, have picked up credible information that show that there is a possibility that there's, uh, you know, uh, such conversations being had? Because um, you've described it simply as, you know, trying to model free, free speech. So is it possible that these intelligence agencies across Nigeria truly have facts that show that there is uh, these things in the, in the, in the, in the plans? Um, there are two statements that have been issued. Uh, there's a statement issued by the, by the DSS, the Department of State Security, and a statement issued by the presidential spokesman. Both statements speak about the same thing, that there is chatter or discussion within the country by, by religious leaders and political actors to declare a vote of no confidence in the president. And I, I don't see how that is going to, to bring down the government. There, there is no constitutional role for religious leaders or political actors to sit in a meeting or to speak and say they have declared a vote of no confidence and that brings down the government. The only constitutional means that can bring down the current government is if the National Assembly decides to impeach the president. But that is not what is happening. So that is why I, I believe that uh, Yes, if there were intelligence that there is such um, rumors or there is actually credible evidence that religious leaders and political actors are trying to declare a, a vote of no confidence in the president, it doesn't really make any meaning because constitutionally that is not possible. But I am saying that the government should, should move beyond this threat. Everybody agrees that there is a problem with Nigeria. The defense minister said the country is bleeding. Mr. President himself, when he met with the service chiefs that are in office now, he said the country was in a state of emergency. Even on the economic side, we heard the central bank governor say the country was not doing well, that he wasn't going to lie about it. So we don't need political actors or religious leaders to tell us the truth. The leaders themselves are saying that the country is not doing well. 
So what the government needs to do is to begin to resolve the issues that are causing this tension, that are causing this anxiety, that are causing this unease in the country. And majority of these issues are security. As we speak today, we have in more than 100 locations around the country within the sovereignty of Nigeria, Nigerian citizens that have been kidnapped and are being held hostage by bandits or all sorts of criminals. We have not had a, a situation where the Nigerian government has stormed even one of these locations in a bid to free her citizens. We, we, we read the report where an American citizen was seized in charge and kept hostage in Nigeria. America came from, from, from Nigeria to America is, is uh, I don't, maybe 6,000 miles. They came all the way and they took their citizens away. We have Nigerians that are, are being held hostage in their own country. And we have not seen one instance of our security going there, gathering intelligence, and finding a way to storm that place. And after storming that place, they either kill or arrest the kidnappers or bandits, depending on their choice. We haven't seen this. These are the things that government does that gives confidence to the, to the citizens that something is being done about their plight and not issuance of, of, uh, of press statements that are more or less threats. You are, you are, already, you are threatening and already traumatized people. Hmm. Of what benefit is that? Mr. Julie, we, we know that in response to this, you know, the DSS threats, the presidency statement, the ACF has said that the presidency is to be more broad-minded in accepting criticism. And, you know, they're saying that this criticism is done in good faith. And if the president acts on it, it's to be for the betterment of the whole of the country. So how would you assess this present administration and how tolerant they are of criticism and opposition? The current administration is showing to be intolerant of opposing views. <laughs> I can tell you, I am sitting now in London, very close to Heathrow Airport. There are radio and TV stations and newspapers in this country, the United Kingdom, that 24-7, they are out speaking against the government. They are looking for one loophole or the other to speak against the government. So speaking against the government shouldn't stop the government from doing its work. Boris Johnson has not thrown his arms in the air and said, look, I, I can't do anything now because I'm being criticized all over the place. No. Boris Johnson even has an opposition leader, unlike the Nigerian system, where we don't have a shadow cabinet. Boris Johnson is facing a shadow cabinet where the opposition leader if Boris Johnson has a defense minister, there is a shadow defense minister. And it's an official role paid for by the government. So that if the de official defense minister makes a statement, the shadow defense minister makes his own statement to say, look, this is how I will do it if you vote me into government. And, and, and government governance is going on. You know, so the, the issues here are this. Both the statement of the DSS and the statement of the presidency allude to elections as the only democratic means to bring down the government. But here is a government that has refused to sign the electoral bill. The electoral bill was placed on Mr. President's table in 2015. And he said, look, I can't sign it because it's too close to the 2015 general, uh, sorry, uh, 2019. not 2015. 2019, the electoral bill, the amended electoral bill was placed on his table before the 2019 general elections. And the only reason he gave us Nigerians was that he couldn't sign it because it was too close to the election. But the elections have gone past for almost two years now. So if a president looked us in the face and said, look, I will sign this bill after the election, and two years have gone, half of the tenure, and he hasn't signed the bill, you can see that he's not being honest with us. 
And if we don't have a credible electoral process, how do you engender confidence in the citizenry that they can use the electoral process to change a government that they don't like? So this is why I'm saying that the government needs to act on the things that the citizens are complaining about and not threatening them. Okay. Uh, Nick Aguli, I wish we had more time, but thank you very much for your thoughts and for being a part of uh, the breakfast this morning. Looking forward to speaking with you again. Yes, thank you, and have a great day. You too. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Good morning. This is where we wrap up the program on this beautiful Wednesday morning, the 5th of May. It's been pretty interesting conversations. Thanks to all our guests who joined us and had uh, you know, a part of uh, the program this morning. If you missed out on any of it, uh, remember to join us on our social media platforms. It's pretty simple, at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on our YouTube channel also. Do uh, join the family over there. There's also the Plus TV Lifestyle channel that you can also uh, check out and follow. Yes, it's Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Thanks again. <laughs> I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osao Ogbawa. The news comes up at 9 a.m. Bye, Bye for now. <laughs>